rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 8.05 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. I hope that you guys are all doing good, well, uh, blessed, and motivated on this Monday morning. Um, We're moving through July at a, uh, or July, wow, Um, January at a pretty fast pace. Uh, It's going to be February before we know it. Uh, good morning, Josie Mendoza Geller. Good morning, Jennifer Ryan Maiden. Uh, Maiden. We haven't been uh, on the show for a while. Uh, my uh, father passed away last week, and uh, well, he passed away the uh, it was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday of last week. Let me see here. Actually, it was the eleventh. Wednesday, the eleventh. Um, last week we just took off. So I want to say, first of all, thank you very much to everybody who uh, uh, sent messages and, and texts and things like that. There's a lot of stuff that I haven't answered on various platforms and channels, but uh, I do appreciate you guys very, very, very much. Uh, so thank you very much to everybody who had a kind word to say, myself and my family. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I... Uh, I have the news. The camera might be off for a good portion of this show. I'm just going to tell you now. Um, the uh, I I do want to share with you guys. I got the news that you love and the news that you need here locally. Time is 8.06. Um, I, uh, I'm going to share with you, though, something. I learned a lot recently about myself. Uh, I learned a lot about my father. And in doing so, I learned a lot about myself um, and just so much, man. I, I really did. Um, but I want to share with you guys um, a little something. I'm going to start off a little bit differently with this show. Uh, you know, and I have a few people in my life who've passed away due to uh, um, suicide. They passed away because of uh uh, drug related things like that. I had a friend, he and I were on the same ship. He got into a car accident and he broke both of his legs. And when he was in the hospital, um, he, you know, was, uh, dealing with the medication they gave him to take away the pain. And ultimately through the combination of that and more hard partying, uh, he ended up passing away. And another friend I had, he passed away as well, but he passed away. Um, he was also on to, hard medications, Oxycontin and things like that. Um, and then something happened to his son. His son was injured and uh, he ended up taking his life. So one, one thing that happened to me was, uh, when I, when I went home, I wasn't sleeping or eating really. Like I really just got back to like sleeping and eating regularly. Indeed, this show was late this morning because like, I'm, this is my first day riding the bike again. Um, and, you know, it, I didn't lose the love of this. Not at all. I wanted to do this for a long time. But I had to start finding good mornings again. I haven't had a good morning since the 11th. Um, and one of the things that happened was, so we, uh, my brother and I and a couple other uh, family members, we went to, uh, you know, we've been steadily cleaning out my father's house, uh, the house I grew up in. And uh, one of the houses I grew up in out there in Harvey. And uh, when we uh, came back home that first day, so my brother and I are driving back to the area. He drops me off at home. Um, I tell you this, and I knew it. When we're driving home, I, I knew. I went inside, and I poured out every drop of alcohol I had in the house. I didn't have much. I mean, I had a bottle of red wine 
I had like four beers and I had like a quarter of a bottle left of Hennessy. I poured all of it out. And the reason why I did that was because I knew that I was vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? And I've never struggled with alcoholism, but I didn't want to be in a position that I was in and start because I, I really didn't take it well. Um, and uh, so that's what I did. I went home and I poured all of it, all of it out because I just didn't want to give myself that crutch, you know. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, with uh, some of the veterans who I've known and shout out to Ali Hernandez and Chris from the Road Home Program at Rush University. If you or someone you know needs help dealing with any issues and you're a veteran, I encourage you to contact them. I can point you in the right direction anyway. Um, but that's not it. So listen to this. So I went. So I poured all that out. And I took the bottles outside and I threw the bottles in the uh, recycling. And when I came back in the house, so now it's like, what time was it? I, it, it, it was like 10 o'clock at night now. So I'm a mess and I go into the bathroom and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try to go to sleep. So I open up my little, you know, little cabinet in the bathroom. I go to get my toothbrush and my toothpaste. And what do I see? On the right-hand side of my uh, medicine cabinet, I see three bottles of pills. You guys will recall that I was in the hospital for a little bit. Remember Good Morning Aurora didn't broadcast for like three days last year? Um, I was in the hospital. I had a, a, a crippling injury. Um, and I didn't finish those pills because they were too strong for me. They were knocking me out. And do you know... I poured, well, I poured all those pills out and flushed them. Just like that, I realized in a moment of, of emotional and mental degradation, I realized that I had the two combinations in my house to take all of what I thought could be what is pain away. That's not good. That's not good. So I want to start this day off by encouraging anyone, especially a veteran, anybody who's out there who's dealing with issues, do a quick scan of your house. Do a quick scan of your house. Just walk through real quick. Check your medicine cabinets, right? Go look again. You don't want to have the ability to have a crutch. Even if you've never dealt with that issue before in your life, you don't want to have the ability to have that crutch in your house. So if you're a veteran and you can hear the sound of my voice, I encourage you, take a walk through your house, scan it around. Make sure you don't have no old pills, nothing like that. Because you never know how strong you may not be until something happens in your life that really knocks you off your horse. The time is 8, 12 a.m. Good morning to you. Michael Rayford is here. Jen Ingram, I appreciate it. Good morning to you. Greg, Dan Barrero is here. Good morning to all of you guys. Aisha Saxon, shouts out to you. The time is 8, 12 a.m. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to start off like that. You got to, you know, you guys have been hearing me say uh, take care of yourself and each other for a long time. I didn't I didn't coin that phrase. That comes from Jerry Springer, if you guys remember. Uh if you remember the show, Jerry Springer, uh, Jerry Springer, you know, no matter what the topic was, oh, my, my wife cheated on me with a horse. All the, you know, the aliens and I are getting married. No matter what it was, after all the hubbub at the end of the show, he told you, take care of yourself and each other. I started using it because, I mean, I'm old enough to remember Jerry Springer, but um, um, what's his name? Lester Holt. From ABC News, he says it at the end of all of his broadcasts and transmissions, and I'm a fan of his, so I started to revive it for practical use here on a local level for ourselves. But uh, I'm serious with that, man. Take care of yourself and each other. I was a, I didn't, I'm not even back on my regular eating and sleeping schedule. I was a, a wreck when I came back home. And in my house, I had the mixtures. I had all of the elements to create a problem bigger than what I was going through. I implore you, walk through your house again. 
Make sure you don't have any unused pills that you stop taking just because of whatever. Flush them. Get rid of them. Throw them away. Return them, whatever you have to do. And if you need help or you struggle with any issues, you can send a message to Good Morning Aurora IL. Send us a DM on Facebook or Instagram, and we will point you in all of the right directions. The time is 8.14 a.m. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, I've got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of digging out I have done. I did see some things here locally that I wanted to share with you. Awesome people. Give me a quick second to find it. I tell you, it's, it's, uh, like I said, I did not lose the, I did not lose the love for the news, but I have not, I have not been having good mornings. Um, so that's the thing. And, uh, you know, I'm still in it, man. You know, we're still in it. It ain't, we ain't going nowhere. So, so get that out your head. But I'm telling you, man, I appreciate more than, you know, I appreciate everybody who listens, who watches and who supports what we're doing. Now, hold on. I did see something locally that I was going to tell you guys about that was important. Aha, here it is. It's the, um, Aurora downtown lineup. Uh, for events taking place this year. Um, Saul Olivas, good morning to you as well. Happy Monday, everybody. Thanks, Dan, for echoing. I echo that statement. 8.15 is the time. Um, Aurora Downtown announced their schedule of events for the year. Um, the downtown organization will bring back all the popular events, including First Friday's Art and Market Aurora and the annual Food Truck Festival. Now, if you're not familiar with the annual Food Truck Festival, um, I want to make the distinction here. I'm going to plant the flag in the conversation. That's different than when you see food trucks that may be out and about. If you see a food truck that's out and about, I encourage you to go check it out. Um, shouts out to uh, Harvey's Firebox, personal friends. Um, I mean, there's so many out there. But um, the um, Food Truck Festival is an actual gathering sponsored by and hosted by the Aurora Downtown Group. Shout out to Marissa that happens as well with a particular date, and we'll uh, get to that. Um, first Fridays will start the 10th year next month in February. The monthly art and cultural offering began in September of 2013. Holy cow. Held 10 months out of the year. First Friday runs from um, February through December. Michael Rafer, I will be sending you two flyers for events later today. Thank you very much, Mike. Be looking for that. Norma Peterson's here. Good morning to you, Norma. Good morning to you, Josie. Josie, I saw your message too. Want to say shout out to you, Josie. Like I said, I I've been slowly getting to the messages and everyone. I appreciate you guys very much. Norma Peterson, I appreciate you too. Good morning to you as well. The time is 816. Um, First Fridays has become an institution in downtown Aurora with more than 30 businesses regularly participating in the open house style event that features art, live music, and activities for all ages. Uh, in March, this is going to be important now, in March, First Fridays will present a special theme. Would you like to know what it's called? Yes, we would, Curtis. <laughs> Thought you never ask. It's called Women in the Front. Uh, and according to Marissa Amoni, this will pay homage to women who stand up take charge, and inspire us. May's First Fridays will bring the large food truck festival to Benton Street, and then the food truck court will open in June at Water Street Square. That's going to be with a handful of food vendors across from City Hall. The food court joins First Fridays in June and then returns through September, excuse me, from September through December. The time is 8.17 a.m. Um, so enough about me, though. Let's talk about you guys. How have you guys been? I hope that you've all been um, well and, uh, and uh, you know, prosperous and, and doing good. I've been, uh, you know what? Let me tell you something else that's been hard. Let me tell you what, let me tell you what else has been difficult. I got to tell you this. Social media, I got to tell you guys, I can't even no more. I really, it's. It is tough. It is tough. It is. I can't even do it anymore with the social media. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, I think, I think now because I have this chasm in the middle of my soul, I just can't even with the, the, the fluff and the corniness now. And, uh, I have to work through this. I, I really do because, one of the blessings that I have, so my dad had, um, he had millions of photos and photo albums. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember a time in history where people would take photos, they would get them developed, and they would put them in these binders and books. Remember, anybody remember that? 
photo albums, photos from the 70s, photos from just, and I need to get myself together and learn to love or like social media again because I'm going to upload these fantastic memories um, and share them and allow the rest of my family to share them. We have our own channels, uh, Spivey Connection. We got our own family channels that we've been doing things on and talking to. I got to start loving it again, man. I do. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Like, it's not easy to to care anymore. Like, it, it really isn't. It is not easy. And I think... I think especially for people who, like, especially for people who maybe lose a loved one that they don't live close to. You know, my dad still lived in Harvey. He lived in the same house. Um, and I think that you you get to a point where, especially in today's age, like my job, for example, is, you know, my job is heavily, heavily influenced by technology. It's my job to be on social media. I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot. It's so difficult to do. It's so hard to do. And what's making it harder is the fact that, like, my dad is everywhere on social media now. And it's just, you know, like, he's the avatar of all the people in my family. And when I open up Facebook, there he is. And it's so difficult. It's so hard. And then I'm turning all the photographs that we have into like digital versions so I can start sharing them. And that's even hard. It's like, I don't love it anymore. I just don't. I just don't. And overnight, seriously, overnight, my job. Well, actually, let me scratch that up. Because I love my job. And you guys know I love my job. Anybody who knows me knows I love my job. Uh, <laughs> so let me let me actually rephrase that. The, the, the key and crucial element of my job, that which makes it practical, is for me now a gut-wrenching experience. It is the most... It, it, it's just that, man. It really is. It's that. And as minute in the large, in the big picture, as small, you know, as pixelated as that is in the big picture of things, it is significant because it is part of that which, I need to, it's, that's the bike that I need to get back on to riding. My life did not stop because my father died. I mean, uh, Saturday, um, we're, we're watching Disney plus, right? Tell you this story. And an email comes over my, my son's watching Disney plus and he's watching Jakerton. Any of you guys with kids out there, Jakerton for all you parents out there, (laughs) Jakerton. Right. So he's watching Jakerton. He's chilling. And he says, whoa. I said, what happened? He says, "Uh, you got an email. I go to the email. I had I had one hundred and sixty three unread emails. With three quarters of those unread emails being people who are in some level of me assisting them. You know, I was looking for housing resources for them or. This lady is pregnant and she's living at the Hassett house or these folks are living in a hotel with three kids making enough money to pay for the hotel for a week. But can they get a home? Can they get an apartment? All of that was still going on. All of that. And it's it's like to deal with what a person may be dealing with and then also try to help others out of it. That's the part that I'm trying to get back into and start working again, because like, again, using the social media tools and all that, it's very, very difficult for me to do. It is super hard for me to do. It is just so hard to do. Um, But the time is eight 23. 
So Dan Barrero says, we have tons of photos. I have over 100 rolls of film undeveloped. Block out the negativity, be the change. Absolutely, Dan. You are right. You are right with that. Um, and to all the families who have photo albums, shout out to you. Those memories are not going anywhere. Araya Swan is here. Good morning to you. Araya Nick Thompson is here. Good morning to you, dear sir. Maria Chirito is here. Good morning to you. Josue Pais is here. Uh, he is the uh, owner of Harry Beast Dog Parlor. So if Snuggles or Snuffy needs their nails trimmed and their herd did, you can uh, go there. Tell me heard about a good morning, Aurora. Okay. Illinois mortgage assistance is still available. The deadline for the mortgage assistance is going to be the 31st of this month. And that falls on a Tuesday, Tuesday next week. Get ready for that. Um, the Illinois Emergency Homeowner Assistance Fund uh, provides up to $60,000 per household. That money can be used to pay delinquent mortgage payments, property taxes, homeowners insurance, and or flood insurance as well. It's a federally funded program to assist homeowners who are at risk of default. For, oh, my God. I don't even know where to scratch it up button is. See? Got to get back with it, man. Got to get back with it. Uh Let's try that again. It's a very easy word. Let's read the whole thing again. ILHAP is a federally funded program to assist homeowners who are at risk of default, foreclosure, or displacement due to financial hardship caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. What to do? Glad you asked that. Contact the Neighbor Project at 630-906-9400 for instructions on how to complete the ILHAP application. Or you can go to our website, www.neighborproject.us. Sip. Bianca Camargo says sip. Yeah, Bianca, let's do it. Sip it up. Sip it up. Hold on. Let me come on camera for y'all to sip it up. Yeah, that's right. Bianca, I'm glad that you brought that up. And congratulations to you for getting sworn in. I saw your pictures. I was super late, but I saw. Mm. All right. Um, thank you very much, Bianca. It's glad to be back, too. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, Tracy Duran is here. Good morning to you, Tracy. Good to see you. I seen, I, uh, I appreciate all you guys, man. You guys are great people. Dan says, lost his dad in 2000. Still hard. Cherish old photos. My dad. Me too. Me too. But I found out a lot of things. I found out a lot of things. Yeah, congratulations to Bianca Camargo. And congratulations as well to all of the... Um, all of our fellow friends and colleagues um, who made great, great great journeys during the last election really stepped up to the plate and made some great change matt hansen shouts out to you brooke shanley all of you guys um and shout out to representative hernandez who i believe became assistant house minority leader if i'm not mistaken again i'm getting with it but shout out to her as well um mike says did you throw out all of your coffee you know what mike i did not but i'll tell you what i'll tell you what happened mike i'll tell you since you ask about that um I did not throw out all of my old coffee. I still have my coffee. Um, and uh, the night, the first night I got home after cleaning out my dad's house, um, I drank a cup of espresso and, uh, you know, got rid of the bottles and the medicine and all that stuff and drank some coffee. And I didn't have much, so I immediately went out to Meyer the middle of the night and got more coffee because uh, I knew I was going to need it. So thank you for asking, dear sir. The coffee has been a uh, help. Wouldn't throw it out for the world. All right. Also, I got some local news for you again about 211. Now, I know what you're saying. Curtis, you've been telling us about 211 a lot lately. Everybody knows about Kane County 211, Curtis. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Not everybody knows about Kane County 211. And it's a local resource, and they do a lot of good stuff. So I want to, I want to, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to tattoo it on your brain, man. One free call to two one one connects you with all human services in Kane County. Get help with food, clothing, shelter, housing, rent, and utility assistance, counseling, substance abuse, domestic violence, and transportation. You can text eight nine eight two one one for help. It's your new free. And confidential information and referral hotline help is available in 150 plus languages. You can volunteer locally as well. Find where to donate food, clothes, and furniture. So not only can you get help, you can give help as well. You can do that. You can do all of that. All right. Um, some more information on the 2023 lineup that we have going on here. 
um, in our city. Now, I'm going to be shooting ahead with you. You're going to hear some months right now. I know you're going to get mad at me. Curtis, why the heck are you talking about August? Listen, knowledge is power. And applied knowledge is powerful. And if you're ready, well, there you go. You don't got to get ready. August 1st Fridays will close down Stolp Avenue this year for Aurora Downtown's annual Stolp Block Party. Also in August, the Alley Art Festival will return with its expanded footprint to Water Street Mall and Downer Place. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's right. Remember, it was bigger this year or last year. That's right. So continue. Our artist community is doing really good things. Get to know some of our artists. Pierre Lucero, Joshua Schultz. There's a lot of them out there. Dada Soul Face, Mr. Brian Daniel Joseph. Uh, get to know him. Follow him on Instagram. And uh, winter of this year, Aurora Downtown will promote shopping and dining downtown with love local days from February um, 1st to 14th. I don't know if they meant to put winter with, well, I guess it's still winter. Participating businesses will offer specials and deals during the weeks, and the group will also host Art and Market Aurora on three Saturdays at Society 57 as well. Uh, the indoor market will feature more than two dozen local makers from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Friday, or excuse me, on February 25th, March 25th, and April 22nd. And get ready for Easter eggs on April 1st. Egg hunt on the island will fill up downtown with Easter and spring activities at several participating businesses. Um, this event will run from 1 to 3 p.m. and also feature Bunny at the Gazebo. A special chance to meet a special Easter bunny and receive a free photo download. How about that? Y'all get to see the Easter bunny. See, we got a city that's second to none, man. I tell you, we got a we got a fantastic city here. We really do. Um, so I want to take this time right now to to uh, say congratulations to two young people um, who are part of the Good Morning Aurora family and their recent um, accolades, Gabriel Bradford, who is our uh, most recent intern. And our most recent new hire is Alexa Rodriguez. She is a student at East Aurora High School. Both of them, um, she is our social media director for Buenos Dias Aurora. Um, and Gabriel Bradford is our general intern. Shout out to them. They both received accolades um, from the mayor in the city of Aurora at the Martin Luther King dinner, the 30th annual event at East Aurora High School. It was the 16th, so it was last Monday. Um, wasn't able to go, but uh, shouts out to them. Um, we got some pictures of them, and I'm going to share the pictures today on uh, on our Facebook and our social media channels. So shouts out to Gabriel Braffer and Alexa Rodriguez. Um, it is really cool. It is really cool to see, uh, you know, the youth, not just the youth that are rocking with us, Right. Not just our, all the youth. It's good to see um, all the youth and so many great people uh, doing great things in the community and being recognized for their hard work and their talents. The time is 831 a.m. Karina Suarez Darden is here. Good morning to you, Karina. Um, good to see you, Karina. As I was telling everybody, I appreciate um, all the messages. I'm just kind of late responding back to people. But thank you very much. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm getting I'm getting back into the uh, proverbial swing of things. Uh, so, you know, bear with me, everybody. And I appreciate you guys oh so much. Um, so this week we will, uh, all the regular programming that Good Morning Aurora and Buenos Dias Aurora was doing will be back at its, this seems cool, it's regularly scheduled programming, right? That seems cool to say. That's been a little bit of a, of a uh, of a sun ray poking through the clouds uh, to be able to say that actually uh, and also putting in the work um, our young mentee from Obanzi Community College Brett Putton who we uh, who has his own segment with us Tuesdays and Thursdays from nine what time is he doing it from nine thirty to ten um, so he'll be back as well and uh, I really got to say my team held it down man the team held it down they really did so I appreciate uh, you know. It, it is good to see uh, you put people in positions and they do things, man. That it's a it's a really good thing to see. I am glad that my dad got to see um, Good Morning Aurora. I am. I'm proud of that. He liked it. He did. I'm glad my dad got to see it. You know, uh, it's a that is a a really good feeling. And as I mentioned earlier too, like. You know, I, I, I knew we'd be back, but, um, you know, I didn't lose the love for the news. It's just, you know, just haven't been having having good mornings. Um, you know, the other thing about it, too, is, is that I wasn't sleeping or eating 
there for a minute too. Um, I was not, so me, I had to get back into it today. So all last week at different points of the week, I started trying to wake myself up in my normal time to do my things at, and that was uh, difficult because I wasn't eating or sleeping at all. Like I wasn't sleeping, was not sleeping. I would just lay, I couldn't sleep. And maybe at like three o'clock in the morning, you know, your body gives out. So then you sleep, but I'm up at like, I would be up at like five or something, just a, a wreck. I hadn't shaved either. Um, so, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was quite the thing. I got to say this, uh, for all the people out there who are dealing right now with, um, with a loved one who may be ill, um, we really need to, uh, be careful to check medication. Well, you know, let me not give you advice. Let me not give you, let me not give you medical advice. You should always speak to your medical provider. Um, however, you know, keep an eye on your family members and their medications and things like that. Uh, be aware of side effects and, uh, you know, the potential for side effects too. Um, you know, my dad had had physical problems his, uh, during his life. He suffered from migraines as a very young man, uh, as a child. And, uh, you know, unfortunately he, uh, had been taking a few medications, which we knew about and they had, um, made him drowsy and different things. So, you know, as, as the older we get, man, especially our family members, the older our family members get, man, if they start taking medications, man, please be aware, please be aware of that. You know, we live in an age where people are living longer. That is a blessing. The miracles of modern medication have done wonders and they continue to do wonders. But at the same time, um, you know, please just keep a, keep an eye out on our family members who are ill and getting sicker and, uh, and, and their medications and things, you know, one's mortality. This is, uh, this is crazy too. Like one's mortality, I think is always taken for granted, you know, especially when you're young, right? You think you'll live forever. That's not, it's not necessarily true. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just something else, man. It really is. It's just something else. It's just something else. I tell you this, dealing with this, this helps right now. It really does. It really does help right now. Um, because I think especially the, the, the story I shared about coming home and, and, finding those pills from when I was in the hospital. Um, you know, I really hope that somebody else can benefit from that information. Uh, scan your house. Make sure you don't have anything in there that could be a potential crutch for you. You really got to take care of yourself. You really got to take care of each other. And whatever you do, whatever you do, if you don't do anything else, make sure that you are with and around your family members um, as much as humanly possible. Times 8.37 a.m. Okay, let me, let me tell you about family focus. And I had a story. This is, let me, a lot of scratches today, y'all, but, but we're getting back into the swing of things. This is, you know, I'm telling you, this is like, this is like walking again, man, which is not funny because I almost didn't walk again. Um, let me tell you about family focus, but I did have a story. There was a really good article, um, City Hall right now, what is it? Um, I had a really good article printed out that I wanted to tell you guys about. I'm going to have to share it with you on Wednesday. Um, but uh, I didn't, I think I, I left it on a printer. What a, what a dummy. So I'm going to tell you about Family Focus and uh, Healthy Families Aurora. But um, I think that recently the city of Aurora re-signed a contract with one of their employer unions or something like that to the to the tune of a bunch of good excuse me, a bunch of good benefits for uh, city employees. I'm going to detail, I'll find that article and I'll detail it for you guys because it was some really good information. I thought to myself, yo, like city, if you're a city employee, maybe that's a, that's a humdinger for you, right? Humdinger, anybody heard that term before? Y'all ain't country. 
All right. Check it out. Healthy Families Aurora. Um, enroll today for this free programming. Uh, Healthy Families Aurora offers weekly home visits by a caring family support specialist, doula support, breastfeeding support, child development screenings, infant massage lessons, child care resources, family outings, and group activities. How can you receive services? I'm so glad that you asked that. Let me tell you how glad I am. I'm so glad I got two numbers for you. You can call 630 488 thousand or eight four seven six four four nine two four nine. Once again those numbers are six three zero four eight eight six thousand or eight four seven six four four nine two four nine. All services are free of charge, voluntary and confidential. Uh, and they also have virtual services as well. So see that? That's it. That's good information for you. Hot off the presses, baby. Hot off the presses. Um okay. So I told you guys about Aurora revamping their special events law. Now, somebody did send a message to us on what day was that? What day was that? To the person who sent us a message on Tuesday the 10th. I know this is this is a long time away from then, but I apologize for the delay. The name of the new law is going to be. Well, it's not a law, but it's called a tier six event. So, so the person who sent that message on Facebook asking what's the name of the new thing, it's a tier six event. And it says, quote, that a tier six event is an event that does not require much commitment of city time or resources. And according to Richard Vinstra, Aurora's Corporation Council, he says, quote, maybe it's a procession up and down a sidewalk that doesn't require traffic control or it could be in a park. Close quote. So that's what it's called. It's called a tier six event. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tracy Duran says, I totally understand. We lost our dad back in January 1999 and wasn't taking care of his diabetes like he should. Uh, this time of year is always super hard for me. I'm here for you and anyone else needs to chat. That's a fact. Josh Schultz, good morning. Good to see you too, brother. Good morning. Good to see you as well. Josh Schultz is a dear friend of ours personally and a dear friend of the show. He is also a talented and fantastic author. His author. He ain't no author I don't even think he can write All he can do is paint Nah he can write um, But uh, you should write a book Josh But you can see his great artwork At many different locations In downtown Aurora All over the place And follow him on Instagram His Instagram is Joshua T. Schultz All lowercase Get to know the brother Okay Josie says Mental health care is so understaffed Dryer has a six month plus wait Unless you're self harming Yikes that's a long time. That is a long time. Um, all right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'm going to share something with you guys uh, as well. So I shared to you, uh, tell you a little, tell you a little personal thing right now, right? Get rid of the news. The time is 841. Tell you a little personal thing too. This is something um, that I didn't know. I'm going to actually write about this. Uh, so we are, uh, we're cleaning my we're cleaning my father's house and uh i found in one of his drawer i opened up his drawer and uh one of his clothing clothing drawers and there was some shirts and something was wrong about these shirts right they just weren't they were folded, but they weren't laying down perfectly as they should be with a flat-bottomed drawer, right? Why is there a hump under these shirts? I lift up these shirts, and I found uh, the uh, the book and the, the elements. I don't know. Exa- My dad was a mason. I didn't know that. I never knew that. My dad was a mason. Now... The protractor with the G inside of it, I saw that the very first time I ever saw that logo was a sticker that was in my dad, and it it was still there. Listen to this. My dad had that sticker on a helmet when he was in Ireland. It was a white helmet. That's the first time I ever saw that insignia, which didn't mean anything when you're what? A kid, right? What does that mean when you're five years old? Nothing. And I grew up, right? And I've interviewed Masons. Shout out to friends of Masons. Anthony Ortiz. 
He's got a meet and greet February 9th. He should go to it. It's in Elgin. Uh, I'll, the flyer's on our Facebook. Um, uh, Las Playaritas. Um, Jose Pineda. Just interviewed him on Buenos Dias Aurora. So I've grown up and I've become aware of what Masons are. Do you know my dad was a Mason? I did not know that. My aunt knew it. She's there. She's like, oh, yeah, he was a man. I was like, what? And it all started to kind of, this is another just little piece of it, right? But it made sense, finally. After all, the, like, I got to, I saw a little bit of why he was why he was. Now, I know this may not make sense to anybody who's listening to it because none of them, you're not my brother, for example, right? Well, we are all brothers, but anyway. Um, it made sense. I was like, so that's why he was fill in the blank. That's why he was so X. That's why he was so this. That's why I had no idea. And not only was he a Mason, he was a member of the Prince Hall, I can't remember the rest of the name, whatever. I'll, I'm going to make a post or write about it or make a blog on Good Morning Royal. You will see. Look it up. He, he was, he was just, I can't even just, I just don't even know. He was more than that. And when I found it, I like, I was just amazed. And it made, it finally started to make sense. I finally started to see that's why this guy was so, right? Because you know how it is when you grow up with your parents, especially when you're a young boy, right? You know how it is. I mean, it's your dad, but it's like, you're like, yo, you know, why is my dad such a jerk? Why is my dad such this, Right. He was, my dad was more than what I really knew he was. And like when I found that, I think, I didn't get like sadder, but I think I got more amazed, right? I kind of like, I kind of loved him more. I was amazed. I was and I was like, holy cow. Like he was he was just something out of this world, man. He really was. He was something else. And but here's what I learned about myself though, because this did have a purpose of me talking. Um here's what I learned about myself. Um I have a really I have a habit. I'm not going to call it a bad habit. It's just something about me. I have a habit. My mind is just scrambled, right? Like, I will, if I need to remember something, I'll probably write it on, like, a post-it note. I'll put the post-it note in my pocket. Then maybe when I get home, I'll type it into whatever I got to type it into. For example, I got, like, spreadsheets and all kinds of spreadsheets of really important information. But if I'm thinking of something and I don't have time to really do all that, I'll just write it and put it in my pocket, and then I'll go home and transfer where I got to. My dad did the same. He wrote he wrote on the back of envelopes and he put the envelope like in the drawer with the forks that way. Right. Cause why would an envelope be in there with the forks? And when he opened it up, he'd be like, Oh yeah, I got to do like, he was just crazy. But I realized something about myself in that. I realized that, Sometimes you need to fully allow yourself to be able to live with and deal with and work through your flaws, whatever your flaws are. Everybody's got flaws. Time is 848. Everybody's got flaws, right? Everybody's got something that maybe they could, they could polish it up a little bit better, right? Right? Who knows what it may be? I don't know. 
I don't know. Maybe you're a person who goes to church. And then right after you go to church, you go out to eat. And now you're judging all the people and the waiters. Why are they so slow? Why? I don't know. I just know mine. And I realized that. I said, you know what? He's doing, or he had been doing, the exact same thing I'm doing or had been doing. But because of the age difference and the gap and the time when he was raised, he had to concisely and he had to not forget that information. There was no Google sheet to put it in. So he wrote in notebooks, notebooks upon notebooks upon notebooks of just things, musings. He wrote personal things. He wrote, he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And, wrote. and that amazed me even more. Because, again, there was no, a repository for that kind of information wasn't going to be made when he was a, wasn't, when he was a kid, you had to remember it and apply it or you lost it forever. And he didn't lose it. He wrote and wrote. If he wrote it on a receipt, he stuck the receipt in the notebook and then transferred it to where it had to go. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I say all that to say, maybe continue working on what it is about yourself that you think is kind of weird. Continue working on those little quirks that you have that nobody else has. Continue working to see what you can do about the little things that you want to kind of tidy up. Continue working on yourself. Just don't stop. All right. Uh, the time is 8.50. Matt Orr is here. Good morning, Curtis. Glad you're back. Thank you very much, Matt Orr. Matt Orr, I sent you a message about a couple of dates to have you on the show. Matt Matthew Orr is running for, um, uh, what the heck is he running? president right <laughs> he's running for six ward alderman ladies and gentlemen matt Orr. we're gonna have matt Orr come on to the show matt Orr is a great young man and uh we're gonna have him come on the show and tell the people uh about himself man he's a really good brother so get ready for him and he's also got a fundraiser coming up and he's got an event coming up uh at tavern on broadway i saw the flyer matt i'll share that my brother dora sanchez soto is here she says my condolences about your father and i admire you for thinking or for sharing your experience still think about helping others i appreciate that dora shout out to you too i really appreciate you guys man i really i really do man i really do uh i i tell you i am uh I am blessed, man. I am. I am blessed. I really am. So, uh, Anna Treasure says that's quite incredible. Hope you have access to someday read through his journals. I'm sure learn some things. I I will. I will. I I will. Um, I learned. I learned things about him I didn't know. I learned something that's really really special about him. Uh, that I'm going to share with you guys at another at another time. Probably write about it or show you something about it. But um, yeah. I, I really did. Um, but I want to say that, uh, you know, a couple of shout outs I'm going to give at the moment. Um, you know, I want to say again, thanks to people like Greg Zilioli, um, a call to shoulders. Call to Shoulders is a great organization here locally. Um, what they do is they help veterans relieve um, uh, their stress and their problems through uh, woodworking. And making fantastic things like seam rippers and liberators and pens and all kinds of stuff. Um, just it's it's a really a positive and creative outlet for excuse me for veterans. Uh, and I encourage you guys to get to know Greg Zilioli. If you don't look up a call to shoulders on Facebook, tell them that you heard about it here on Good Morning Aurora. That's the first thing. Second thing is um, you know Ali Hernandez and the Road Home Program. Like you guys really need to. Take it seriously, especially if you're a veteran. Um, you know, you never, you know, you got to make sure that you're strong on all occasions. And you never know how strong you may have to be until something happens that you don't 
expect. Um, so if you're a veteran and you need help or someone to talk to, reach out to the Road Home Program at Rush University. Tell them you heard about it here on Good Morning Aurora. Um, you know, there's a couple things, too. A um, couple other things, too, that I want to I want to share uh, as well. I've seen a lot of a lot of really good, um, really good local things taking place with uh, a lot of our people. And by our people, I say not just people who listen to and watch Good Morning Aurora, but our, our like minded folks here in the community. Java Plus, Javier Burgos, um, the Township Dems. Uh, there's so many of you people that I can't even name. Um so many of the the um the good things that are taking place out there in the city and in Kane County, for example, on a larger basis, so many of the good things that are taking place are just being driven by normal people. It's these normal people who are doing so many of these amazing things. A lot of them are part of likewise amazing organizations, family counseling service, family focus, Aurora Community Food Pantry. Or see Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry. Um, but we've got the sandwich bacon party that just happened, I think. That was the Aurora Community Fridge group. Um, and there's so many things happening on a local level. If you get to know some of the local people who are doing the positive works, then you'll see what some of these organizations are doing. And that's where we can really make a big impact here locally. If we can help, if we can help some of the people accomplish some of their tasks they represent larger organizations if we can help some of the people accomplish some of their tasks that also helps these organizations to do more things Karina Suarez Darden is a uh, great friend of the show she is fully involved in the community on many different aspects and fronts so by helping out person like her and her helping out a person like me together we can move those proverbial um, mountains and try to help people out in many different ways from Food insecurity to housing, affordable housing, all those kind of things. Rome wasn't built in a day, um, and the people who built Rome were the workers. So if you just continue to help the people who are doing some of the great things, uh, you know, the world will be a better place, and Aurora will be a better place too. So with that being said, it's 855 right now. Um, you guys should also – be aware um, that pretty soon here, I think, I think in, uh, let me see if I got it here, actually. Uh, well, we've got a couple of, uh, this is land improvement, not where I was going with that. Um, so there's a couple of things, actually. We were going to have the Be Smart campaign on the show, but this was going to be last weekend. We're going to reschedule our interview with the Be Smart campaign. The Be Smart campaign um, their focus is on educating about the dangers of firearms in the home around young people. That's through many different things. I'm not going to massacre it by thinking that right now we'll have the actual interview and you guys can hear from, um, from these great ladies. Uh, but firearm storage in houses with young people is the primary um, thing that they're trying to teach about. And also we need to uh, redo and reschedule our episode with um, – State's Attorney Jamie Mosser. Um, again, last week we were going to have the uh, interview with her, but we did not. The reason why the interview happened for those, I saw some comment. Did she back out of it? No, she didn't back out of it. Um, we had to reschedule because my father passed. Um, so we're going to redo that and uh, bring that back to you guys. But our ongoing partnerships with the Kane County government and law enforcement uh will continue we've got a february event that will all that will stay scheduled um as well and then also the last thing is that you guys saw that there was a um there was a challenge to the uh recently passed protect communities act of firearms um law against assault weapons the ban against the sale of assault weapons and ammunition um there was a law that was uh, there was a challenge to the law, but that only applies to like 800 people in one county. Um, so I have that article as well. I'll bring that article. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. Um, so get ready for that. There are some changes going on with those laws, as mentioned. We will do our very best to um, to uh, smoke out the spin, as George Stephanopoulos would say. Shout out to George Stephanopoulos. 
good guy, ABC News. Uh, we're going to smoke out the spin when it comes to that, and we'll see what we can do to give you guys the best, and uh, rightly so, the best and most factual information on everything. The time is 8.58 8 a.m. Um, this, uh, this was just what I needed, actually, to, to, start, uh, to start climbing out and uh, get back to the sun. So I hope that all of you guys have a, uh, a very blessed morning and a very blessed day and a very blessed rest of the week. Um, yeah. See you guys on Wednesday. Thank you very much uh, for being who you guys are and uh, for all that you guys do. And thanks for subscribing, for watching the show, and for helping us on our journey um, because uh, we've got we've got more to do and we've got more to show you. So I hope that you guys have a blessed, fantastic, positive rest of the day and rest of the week. We will see you guys here um, Wednesday morning once again at 8 a.m. Take care of yourself and each other.